It can happen for you. That, that young man was concerned. He was concerned. He had a concern, a deep concern. He knew, he knew smoking was wrong. I could sense that. He knew it. And he shouldn't be doing that. But really, that's just one thing. If you're smoking cigarettes, if you're drinking alcohol, there's other things in your life that's separating you from God. It's sin. It's because you're choosing it over obedience. God wants you to obey Him. He wants you to fear Him all your days. There's a lot of temptations out there in this world. And it's so easy to get snared in these temptations. But they, they're, they're all defeated if you come in humility before a holy God and you cry out to God, ask Him to grant you the fruit to give you the ability to bear fruit of repentance of sin. So if I tell you this right now, the Bible talks about that men loved darkness rather than light. That's why they didn't come to the light. And there's so many churches that teach you that you can continue to sin. But I'm telling you right now, Jesus calls you to go and sin no more. He calls you to repent of your sin. You must be born again. You must be born from above. It's not by your will. It's not by the will of your blood. It's not by the will of your flesh. But by the will of God. God wants you to be born again. And if there is any sin, if it's lusting out, it could be lusting after men. They be lusting after women. Any kind of lust other than the, the the trust and the love for God, you're outside of God's grace. And you need God's grace. You're a sinner, you need God's grace. If that's all you believe you are is a sinner, you're outside of God's grace. You're not going to make it. Sinners do not go to heaven. Born-again believers who put their faith and trust in God and have repented of their sin and they walk in holiness... But I'm going to tell you now, getting drunk, reveling, just partying, just wanting people to honor you, just wanting to be famous, wanting to be seen by all, wanting to have all the riches this world can offer. And what that's going to do is it's trapped you. You become a slave to it. And that's what your desire is, just to, to please your flesh. So do not love this world. I'm calling, I'm telling you, you must repent. You must turn from it. Turn from all your sin. Confess it. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sin, He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It also says, and this is found in 1 John chapter 1, it also says, if we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, the light of Jesus Christ, the light of truth, the one who spoke light into existence, He brought light into darkness, and Jesus is the light. But He who walks in the light as He is in the light has fellowship with one another. You have fellowship with God when you walk in the light. And Jesus is the light of the world. You must be born again or you're condemned. If you do not believe in the Son, you do not have the Father. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But if all you're living for is to please your flesh, is to fulfill the desires of your heart, you are a child of the devil, you are an enemy of God, you are wicked. You must realize that you've fallen short. And your desire isn't truly for God. The Bible says there's none that seek after God. But what God's doing, He's drawing you to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to the Father but through Jesus Christ. And I'm out here to proclaim Jesus to you. If you do not have Jesus, you are damned. You are condemned. The Bible says, For God did not send His Son, Jesus, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. I want you to be saved. If you have just a form of godliness and lacking the power thereof, you are headed to hell fire. You're headed to the lake of fire without Jesus Christ. You must repent. You must be born again. You must turn from your sin. Deny it. Reject it. Stop your sinning. 
there should be nothing more concerning to you than if I've sinned before a holy God, and we all have. But what you must be concerned with too is, is am I in the fold? Am I a child of God? Have I received by grace, God's grace through faith that's trusting Him? And you need to trust Him with all your heart. The Bible says, whoever believes shall be saved. That's just not, I acknowledge that Jesus is, is who He said He is. And yeah, I'm going to have, yeah, I, may, I sin, you know, I'm a sinner. That's not going to do it. If you're a sinner, and you're a confessed sinner, and you know you sin willfully, you are outside of the grace of God. The grace is not, His blood has not covered those who continue to sin. His grace will not cover those who continue to sin. The Bible said, Jesus said, He's come to set you free. In the Bible in Romans, it says this, it says, He who sins is a slave to sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides in the house forever. So if you're a sinner, you're a slave to that sin. And, and I'm out here to be obedient to the Father in Mark 16, 15. God has commanded me to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Guys, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things out here that's wanting to, to take the desires that you should, you were created to have towards God, and turn them towards the world. The Bible says in James, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity, it separates you, it is it's carnal, is enmity with God. And it goes on to say in James, therefore whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. I don't want you to be an enemy of God. I don't want you to continue in your sin. So God has called me out here tonight to preach the gospel to this duck through, this shell station. So people, if you can hear my voice, I'm, I'm praying that you can hear it. I know that there is uh, music playing under that little shelter there, and I'm trying to, to uh, be able to use my right of freedom of speech. We have that in this country. And it's a shame that there's there's these people who call themselves Christians not doing more of this. Preaching the gospel, coming out, calling people, calling them out in their sin, rebuking them. The Bible says, Him who we preach, we preach to all men that you must repent. Repent of your sin. Turn to Jesus Christ today. The Bible says repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ can break the bonds of sin. Jesus Christ is the way. He's the truth. He is the life. And there is no other way to the Father but through Him. And I want to preach a solid, a full biblical preaching of the Gospel. That if the Bible says that if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. Jesus said this. For it would be better for you to enter into heaven lame than to enter into hellfire with both of your eyes. Jesus preached. Jesus preached hellfire and your sin separating you from God. And He is the ransom. He is the Redeemer. It's through Jesus Christ you can have hope. He's alive. He rose from the dead. He was crucified for your sin. He was buried in a tomb. And on the third day, He rose in victory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ can save you. Jesus Christ can make you straight. Make you live a straight life. A righteous life. The Bible says he who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. But you've got to examine yourself. You've got to look into the mirror of the Ten Commandments. If you've, if you've fallen short, if you've even stumbled in one point of the commandments, you're guilty of breaking all of them. And you need to repent of your sins. You need to be born again. Cry out to God. 
bear fruit worthy of repentance. But I'll tell you this, drunkards, adulterers, idolaters, liars, looking at pornography, sex outside of marriage, all of that is condemned. If you're of a religion, if you just say, hey, I'm a Baptist, hey, I'm a Methodist, hey, I'm a Catholic, hey, I'm a Pentecostal, hey, you know, I home church, hey, I do this, I do that. If there's any other testimony than Jesus Christ and Him alone, that you need to turn from your sin, look to Jesus Christ to redeem you, to give you power, to give you a sound mind, to give you strength, to give you holiness. But you have to put it on. You have to walk in it. You have to press into Jesus Christ. But it starts with, how do you stand before a holy God? Are you His enemy? Do you just sin willfully? The Bible says that if we sin willfully, after we've come to the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for your sin but a fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour you. If you sin willfully after you've received the knowledge of the truth. So you need to turn from your sin. Cry out to God. Look at what He did for you. He came in the flesh. He came. And He died for the sins of the world. But you must repent. You must recognize that you've fallen short of God's glory. And the Bible says we all have. I've fallen short. I've broken every commandment. I know of myself as the worst sinner out there. But I am redeemed. I awake to righteousness. So turn to Jesus Christ today. This is the most loving thing you can ever hear is for a preacher to come out here to tell you to put your alcohol, put your cigarettes, put your pornography, put every lust of the flesh away, and repent, turn to Jesus Christ. Be born again. You must repent. I want to share that as much as I can. That's what Jesus did. Jesus called you to repent or you will perish. I don't want you to perish. If there is any sin, anything that wars against your conscience, I pray your conscience is still fresh. I pray it's not hard. For you just mock and laugh and think it's a joke, but it's not going to be a joke when you're judged an enemy of God and you're cast into the lake of fire. But there's hope. Jesus, God's mercy. Mercy for us. We didn't even ask for it. It was God's gift. The Bible says that it's by grace we're saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not out here for money. I'm not out here for money. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless you. I just would ask you to consider your life. You know, examine yourself. If there's any sin, sir, it's separated you from a holy God. And God is faithful. God comes in and gives you peace with God. You won't have it here in this world. Uh, you won't have it in your truck. You won't have it in your job, your wife, your kids. You want the hope that's eternal, that lasts forever. And now just pick up your Bible and read the Bible. And cry out to God first off. Ask Him to, to show you the way. He will. The Bible says that uh, God draws those to Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So, Would you like a gospel track, sir? How you doing? What's your name? Buck. God bless you, Buck. Oh, no, no thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm not out here for money. I have water, but... Thank you. Yeah. How about that one? Hopefully it's not too I small. Watch, I watch Brother Jones every Sunday morning. Two times. Brother who? Jones. Out of Texas. Joel Olstein? Yeah. Well, I, I would just, I, I would stay clear and tell evangelists. Right. Buck, right? Yeah, yeah I, I would. Do you read your Bible? Yeah. You read it every day? You believe what you read? Yeah. Do you do what you read? Yes, I can. You can do it. You want to know how you do it? Through Jesus. But you have to stay in it. Because Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you're not mine. And I mean, if you're in God's Word, His Word should be nourishing the Spirit. 
Is my speech flesh? No, what you hear is it flesh? Is what I'm telling you flesh? That's spirit. And so the person's spirit bears witness to what they say. The Bible says your words condemn you or your words justify you. Okay? And you want the Word of God in you so that you become a new creation, born again. Joel Osteen, I don't believe. I haven't seen a lot of it, a lot of them, but what I've seen, it, it, it definitely makes it, it makes me sense um, some pleasure. Yeah, he has a, a way of, unique way of pushing Right. I'm not condemning Joel Osteen. What's going to condemn him? Yeah. Is his sin, and if he believe, I mean, like, do you believe he teaches? You're you're a sinner, always a sinner. You believe you're a sinner. You believe you're a sinner. You're not a sinner. Have you ever sinned? Oh yeah, everybody. Ever, everybody sinned. And he says that. Every single time, you don't know anybody's perfect. Right. Well, no, there was one that was perfect. But he's gone. Well, he he's not gone. He's not gone. His power is not decreased. Well, any sin in your life, Bob, I mean, have you kept the commandments of God the best you can? Have you ever examined yourself by them? Like if you, have you ever told a lie? Yeah, what would that make you, Buck? A liar. More specifically, a liar. If I lied, I'd be a liar. So God sees you as that. So He's going to judge you according to those commandments. And in the Bible it says if you stumble on one of the commandments, you're guilty of breaking all of them. One. How many sins keep you out of heaven? One. But we have transgressed. We've, I've, I broke all the commandments. So that's more than one. But what I'm telling you is God gives you, He gives you His grace. He gives you His gift that gives you power that lives in those who've repented and become born again. So then sin no longer has you slain. So just consider, read that gospel track, okay? God bless you, Buck.